Hello, good morning and welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. I'm throwing the dice today in the chance of a thresher shark. For anybody who doesn't know what a thresher shark is, it's it's a type of shark that we get around the UK. I mean the worldwide, we do go get them in the UK, and they have a long scything thresher style tail, hence where they get their name from. And they use that to hunt fish. They whip it and hit fish with it. <laughs> yeah, there have been quite a few of them caught around my local area recently. Whether it be the local tuna chart tagging boats, local tuna chart tagging boats, other charter boats, or even recreational anglers. Like one of my friends, Will Dale, caught one of them the other week, and it was a stunning fish. In fact, I'll put a picture of his fish in here now. Now they are incredible. I've not done an awful lot of thresher fishing. In fact, I've never had one on this boat before. I did do a session recently with a friend of mine, Jason Gillespie, up the back of the Isle of Wight and it completely changed my whole approach. Now he's had quite a few of them and, and picking his brain about it. Now, if anybody's watched my Blue Shark videos, my traces are a wire trace body incorporating a lead and a wire hook length. Now all he uses is just a wire tippet. That's just a wire hook length. So the traces that I'm using, the trace body is fluoro and the hook length is wire because these stretches can be quite wire shy. The sharp end is where their teeth are, so that's a little bit of wire they use, and the rest of them, because they don't roll up so much as blues, if you've seen them at the side of the boat, they ride and they roll, and that's why you need a long length of wire. Threshers apparently don't do that. Also, the methods for fishing for them is slightly different. Now, blue sharks, <laughs> they're a scavenger as well as a predator. The chum slick, I'm running a chum slick down, you can see at the moment, you can see the glassy bit just running down on my float at the back. The chum slick brings the sharks in, they follow it to your boat and they find your dead baits. Threshers, the theory as I understand it is slightly different, being that your chum slick attracts in little fish, mackerel, scad, pilchards, scarfish, anything like that. They come into the slick hunting those fish, they're an active hunting predator. So they'll come into your slick following the little fish and find your baits out there. That's, that's how I understand it anyway. The tackle is different from blue shark fishing. Now blue sharks in, in local area, in south coast of England, go to 200, 250 pounds. I've had them on this boat to 150, and you can deal with those with, with a fixed pull setup. Now thresher sharks, they can go to 1,000 pounds. So you'll notice the gear that I'm using is slightly bigger. For good reason. <laughs> also, one of, the, one of the differences between the, the blue shark fishing that you'll see is it. Blue sharks, a good session you might get 10, 15, even 20 fish in a session. Thresher sharks, you're more likely to be fishing for 10 sessions to get one fish. But that fish, that fish is worth it. Yeah, it's it's a numbers game and you've got to be out after it. So here I am. The baits, I have managed to get myself some lovely live mackerel. Like I say, they're an active hunter. So I'm fishing live baits out inside the chumsley. Just wish me luck. Well, there have been quite a few thresher sharks caught this year in my local area. We'll, we'll see how it goes. So yeah, I've got a bait out hopefully for one of those. That's on the big rod at the back. So I've, I've run one bait out to the back. You can see on the rod there. <laughs> We've got an interesting one. As you can see, it's a lovely sunny Cornish night. It's absolutely pouring down with rain. And um, yeah, we've, we've come out because we kind of said, right, we'll do this. I'm sorry, but the lens is covered in water again already. We have managed to hook into the elusive thresher shack that we're talking about. Uh, yeah, we were just, sorry. We were feeding out, feeding out baits, weren't we? Yeah. Fed out baits. You're a good one. Right. Where are you at? Straight under the boat. Just leave it, yeah. Just leave it. Oh, it's right. just ticking forward. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just run the baits out. One had got out, second one straight away. <laughs> Hooked into it and we thought it was a little blue shark because it was just fanning around on the boat, didn't it? And then it come up alongside the boat and did two massive jumps. It's a thresher shark, I would put it at about 15 feet long from, from nose to tip of tail. Yeah. All I'm trying to do at the moment is I'm just running the engine forward to try and keep the, 
the fish away from underneath the boat until it's tired out. How is it fighting? Is it what? running or not? No, it's just sort of sitting there. Just turned round then, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ran to the boat and then ran away again. Yeah, well, I was hoping it was going to come up to the surface here. It's coming up. Get ready, it's coming up. It's somewhere. There it is. It's Oh, oh, I tell you what, that tail's insane. Oh, <laughs> Some bow in that line. Not a bad one. No. Some turn of speed on it. That's quick, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> We're just saying that we're out here about getting ourselves into these daft situations. And yeah, it's cold and it's damp and it's drizzly anymore. We're just kind of saying you have to be mad to be out here. You'd have to love it to be out here. As soon as that reel starts clicking off, though, you it's all forgotten. You want them to the boat, but you don't no, want them near the you boat. Don't, you don't want it too near the boat yet. That tail is. Yeah, if oh, not, keep going, keep going. If you're not properly worn out, that it'll do you some serious mischief. It's played everything straight up and down almost, hasn't it? Yeah. I was going to say, ease up on it a bit. I'll get you further away from it and try and bring it in at distance. Well, so I think it'll be easier to deal with it deep at distance than done underneath us. Right. I don't know if you want to ease off a little tiny bit. You ready? Yeah. I'm surprised. It, at the moment, the fish is just hanging real low below, below the boat. That's why I'm having to keep dogging the, the boat ahead. Keep seeing it on the sounder at about 15 metres below the boat. But it's just... just go forward. <laughs> Blowing a bit, lad. <laughs> Blowing a bit, lad. Jesus. Look at the length of it. <laughs> oh my god. Christ. <laughs> it's looking big and it's not even on the surface yet. Oh my god. I'm not sure how you're gonna get hold of that. Um <laughs> oh my. Right, it's really long. Be wary about that yeah. tail. Oh, I tell you what, it's, a, That's it's a, an absolute donkey. It's donkey. You got it? Do you want me to back off the drag a bit? No, mate, it's coming up. I'm just watching for that tail. Oh my god. Just be wary of that tail, can you? Turn it. Do you want me to do anything? No, mate. You got it's it? coming up. I was waiting for. I don't know if you got all that then, but I could <laughs> lead it up to the side and I could see the, the way that it pulled that tail around wasn't tired. It was it was ready to go back. Which was <laughs> I was I was just waiting for it there. Just as I was pulling it around that second time I thought it's gonna go here. That's same. Um, I thought you had it, then he pulled me out of the back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you heard Chris say, but same as when you're blue shark fishing or any other fishing. As you get them to the side of the boat like that, 
you need to back the drag off a little bit because when they turn around to go that's when it'll either part it off it'll snap the rod or nearly pulled him out of the boat <laughs> but yeah I'd, um, that fish is more like 20 feet long <laughs> that, <is a> <laughs> that tail, tail alone tail alone is 10 foot long I don't even know how we're going to be able to get this alongside, lad. You've touched the leader, haven't you? You've leaded yeah, it. I've leaded it. It's a caught fish, but I want to. I want to either get. Photos, a, I want to get a tag in it. I want to get some photos of it. I want to get a measure on it as well. Right, so when you're playing them, ideally you want to keep them away from the boat, or if they're digging down deep, sort of just leave the boat in gear and just kick alongside. Just keep up with them. Don't really force them. If you think they'll come up, just sit down to the harness plate up. Don't cross the line over. I'm gonna have to give this a kick. Yeah, and always have if when it's close I'm trying to get it up, put the reel in, single gear, then put it in two speed. Gives you a bit more power on it. And ideally you want someone who can drive the brake pretty well because it is not easy. Driving the boat's the hardest bit. Well, <laughs> thank you. That's all right. At the moment, the reason why it's difficult is because not only is the fish right underneath us, it's incredibly manoeuvrable, but I'm having to look backwards to see where the fish is and steer the boat in reverse. Not in not going backwards, but the controls because I'm looking behind me and looking backwards. This is the first time by the way that I've worn one of these, so we'll see how that goes. I don't usually wear them because it makes my ears stick out even further. I don't need any help with that. Yeah, 30 metres. There's the fish. 30? Yeah. Going again. Played possum. Pretended it was ready. He just come up to size us up, didn't he? Mm. Just come up to have a look at us. 20 metres. It's definitely a case of, it's like when you see people trying to fight big skates and they just go all hell for leather and they try and drag it straight up and they end up breaking some or breaking themselves. You can't force a fish. That fish, I couldn't even estimate to how heavy it is. It's, if we can get a chance of getting a rough, a rough length, we can possibly get like an estimation on size, but that, that fish is massive. There's a lot more than I do. Over, <laughs> well excess of what our first estimate. Are you gaining any, taking it back? Yeah, not getting anywhere. Pour it out. Bending the rod to it. No, we're looking at that to you. 12 metres. 12 seconds. I'm just going to give it a little kick to try and spin yeah, it around. Yeah, If you can bring it back, I'll leave it now. Try to, it So, ready? Right, keep going. She's got to be done now. Got it? Okay. Right, back to drag off a little time. Yeah. Right. Need to turn it without going near the engine. So, ready? Right, keep going. She's got to be done now. Got it? Got it. Right, back your drag off a little tiny bit. Need to turn it without it going near the engine. I'll tell you what, that is a special fish. Oh my god. I don't know what we're doing. Whoa. Tell you what, that is a special fish. That right there is where you need to be extra careful with these fish. I'll play that clip back in slow motion. Watch how it primes that tail up trying to hit us. Missed my hands by only a few inches. Oh, nah. See it coming. Still not tied out. Don't like it, does it? Well, no, the only problem there was the, was the wrong, wrong way around to bring it up beside the boat. Still only back down to 15 meters if you can. 
Yeah. Which word you need? Can't see where the line is, mate. Right. Approval. Yeah. I just watched this floor, I didn't get wrapped around my head here. And that is how easily things can go wrong. We'll take a look from a different angle and see what happened again. There it is. Ready? No. Oh, gone. A slack loop in the leader wrapped round an eye on the rod, and when the fish ran, it pulled tight and snapped. Is the line getting wrapped round here? Yeah. Ah. Oh. <laughs> well, leaded it so it counts as a caught fish. Hopefully, there'll be enough. Yeah, as I was trying to turn the fish to bring it into unhook it, you could see when it started to go that it was it was going to start flapping to go, and the line had got caught round part of the rod. Now all that was there was just as we brought it in we'd put the line on the boat. Some of the line I got caught on one of the eyes. It's unfortunate that we didn't manage to, to get a tag in it or to get a proper measure on it, but counts as a caught fish. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Good driving. Hmm. Oh. Should stick another bit out? We might as well <laughs> give it a go. <laughs> Right, we've, we've finished up now, we've, we've drifted around for a couple more hours and no more signs of a fish, but <laughs> that one that we did get was definitely worth it. I, uh, I, we've been trying to talk about it and I don't think that I can, I can properly gauge how, how big, how heavy it was. I'm going to have to go back and check through the footage and see if I can't, see if I can't have some type of measurement of, for scale to be able to give you a conversion, but without exaggeration it was 16 to 18 feet in total length from, from the tip of the nose to the tip of the tail. And this is why, in, in some of the other videos, in one of my sharking videos early on this year, I'd, um, I got completely blitzed by a fish when I was fishing my fixed bowl setup. Just taking it. Tell you what. It's straightened out and snapped the hook. And I've been saying to you in the videos, I was like, you could get latched into a 200 pound plus fish, which which we did today. So it explains why you need these, these heavier setups. Um, I don't mind saying if I'd have been fishing by myself, if I'd have been fishing solo and I'd have hooked that fish, I wouldn't have landed it. Just because the amount of the amount of maneuverability that we needed because the fish gets hiding underneath the boat it was well, it was clearly a clever fish yeah. turn of speed when it ran at you and then ran away it was yeah, just it was unreal, wasn't it? it was it was crazy i mean we've we've had big fish before we've had bluefin tuna before and we're, we're comparing the speed and the power it was well, the speed of that how it turned it unreal, wasn't it? and also when you got them to the side of the boat i don't know if we proper, <laughs> properly showed you but that whipping scything tail yeah you're cautious of it haven't you yeah that get you 
there was there was a couple of times when it swung that tail up and it slapped into the boat so you, you might notice when it come round and I was leading it, it we do we were ducking back <laughs> I've uh, I covered the things like the rigs and the setups in the earlier section of this video I hope hope on hope that it's been good footage for you um, if you have any other questions just put it into the video if I if I can answer them, I will do um, well done Chris no, thanks. thank you very much thanks for driving <laughs> appreciate that I'm glad it wasn't by myself yeah uh, yeah I'm going to have a calm little bit of reef fishing now I hope you've enjoyed joining us all the very best see you later